Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 35 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we'll be talking about that the Australian Bureau of Statistics data has shown that the number of Australian businesses using commercial cloud computing services has risen from 19% to almost one third in just one one year and make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for using commercial cloud computing services. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be on. So, uh, so great I built you a wall by the way, Brad. Handcrafted myself. Excellent. Are you taking a, hopefully you're not taking a, a leaf out of Trump's wall because uh, what we're trying to do is build bridges. <laughs> no, no, no. My wall. My wall. I paid 30 bucks for it. Yeah. It's a great wall. I love the wall. I love the wall. So look, it's a great, great to have you on, Dave. And look, you know, the good, good sort of opening question, I suppose, really for this would be your, your sort of expertise on, on understanding where is the cloud computing ceiling in Australia, in your opinion? 70%. I can give you the exact number. Uh, I think that ultimately the, the Australian uh, businesses are going to run into the same thing that American businesses are running into, where they're going to hit a wall where it's going to be 30% of the applications aren't just cost justifiable to move into the cloud. And so Australia is moving quickly. We talked about this on the show before, I think because of its you know innovative nature, um, you know where it's located in the world, the, the economies that, that it's living up to. Cloud computing is kind of you know, custom made to kind of take the Australian businesses to the next level and they're adopting as quickly as they can without fear, which is very good. But ultimately, if they start migrating systems to the cloud, they're going to see kind of a diminishing return from the systems over time. And things are going to be a little bit harder to migrate. Things are going to be very difficult to move to the cloud. And we're going to see this curve that's going to not necessarily uh, flatten out, but it's not going to be as steep as it was, you know, a few years ago. And I think that Australia is going to see that as well as you know everybody else in the world. Probably less so because I think a lot of the systems in Australia are more modern, open systems, things like that, than uh, Japan and China and the U.S. and European, which have been around for a longer time. You have older business in the space, but they're definitely going to get a wall in their migration to the cloud. Yeah, thanks there, Dave. Just, just to let the viewers know, we're having a bit of a signal problem today between Dave and I. I've got a feeling it might be because of the wall. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. But there seems to be a bit of a, a, a lag on the on the Skype call at the moment. So uh, please, please bear with us. Uh, look, you know, you, you're right. I mean, I mean, Australia does follow trends to a certain degree, although it does set a lot of trends with how it's embracing blockchain, how the government are, you know, have embraced and built this relationship with IBM, uh, and also with the public sector and, and local government um, building relationships with training its staff. I think about five or six thousand staff in the next couple of years through an AWS. Um, uh, sorry, Microsoft Azure program. So I think there's there's a huge amount that's being embraced at the moment. Certainly, the top four banks are embracing artificial intelligence a lot more, uh, and also with uh, their in-house training. I know NAB are running through AWS, etc. So there's a, there's a huge amount being embraced in Australia. Decisions can be made that bit quicker. We've identified that on a couple of different shows and spoken to several people about how quickly we can go to market in Australia. Certainly a bit quicker than everywhere else because you know we've picked up on certain trends that have worked, certain trends that haven't worked, and can then just move to implementation a lot quicker. So the Australian economy, you're right, it's, it's going to curve off at some point. I think Gartner actually said an interesting um, statistic that the a market's already moved up. 15% from 2017 and it's reached 6.5 billion Australian dollars and that's been predominantly to the software as a service which has been adopted quite fully so it's exciting times with regards to that isn't it Dave? Yeah it is and um, you know it ultimately it's going to be more adoption in cloud going forward I mean the Australian businesses that I've looked at um, they're pretty much in line with the rest of the world probably a little ahead so they're at about 40% uh, migration in, in terms of SaaS as well SaaS infrastructure as a service platforms as a service those sorts of things and so they're they're really going to build up from that and so they have a huge run between 40 and 70% it's going to be a bit of a slog as they get towards 60% um, but it's going to be a huge land grab between 40 and uh, and 60%, you know, going forward. So, you know, they're looking to build as quickly as they can. I think we're also going to see a lot of born in the cloud um, businesses in Australia going forward. And that's companies that have basically taken the fearless leap and decided to adopt cloud computing uh, forthright. And they went ahead and 
sold their data centers. They may have a few little colos running here and there, managed service providers where their legacy applications are running, but they've decided to move everything that they have, including data applications, workloads, and looking to um, you know uh, automate everything that exists in the cloud. And that's something you don't see too much of, um, but we're starting to see more of in the European Union, also in the uh, in uh, in Japan, and now in Australia. Australia. The United States is probably slow to adopt that, that because we have businesses that typically have legacy systems. So they have data center space, they've signed contracts, things like that. So it's very difficult to get out of these sunk costs. Where the Australian business is not so much. And so the way in which they are looking to grow is not necessarily within the data center, it's within the clouds. And I think those are going to have points of presence in Australia, as AWS does, and Azure is looking to do coming forward. So it's really going to be you know, kind of a huge transformation and something that the other countries in the United, in the world can, can model themselves after. So, you know, what I tell people when they're looking for advice in terms of the most innovative company in the space, uh, I would say, well, look to Australia. I mean, they're really kind of making fearless leaps, you know, into cloud computing and innovation and basically moving to digitize their existing systems more so than any other countries in the world right now. Yeah, they really are. 100% agree with you, Dave. Look, you know, it moves us on nicely, actually, to, I mean, we could dig into this subject some more, but we're just mindful of mindful of your time this evening. So, look, you know, with regards to the, the top three tips you've got prepared, and I think we, we, we do these every week now, and they're really, they, they provide so much value for the listeners. We hope that everyone, wa you know, watches and listens to the whole show and just doesn't st skip your top three tips. So, uh, so, Dave, what are your top three tips for using cloud computing services then? Thing number one is consider the workloads. I mean, one of the biggest mistakes I see right now in the corporate world is the fact of the matter is that as they move workloads into the cloud, they don't really understand what those workloads are. And so they end up uh, leveraging workloads and moving to the cloud, migrating to the cloud that are really kind of contraindicated as you know, really good candidates to move to the cloud. So you have to understand the, um, the applications, the way the data is set up, how it's coupled to the applications. Uh, the platform that it's leveraging, how coupling to the platform is there, what they're leveraging threading, you know, those sorts of things are really kind of geeky topics. But the reality is if you end up moving an application into the cloud that's not well, well suited for the cloud, you're going to have to either do a lot of remediation, you're going to have to basically re application holistically uh, to take advantage of the cloud native platforms, which, which can be very expensive. Or you're going to end up having performance problems, reliability problems, or security problems. And, and to me, that's a fail. Next is considering security. Um, we have to understand that security is really systemic to all of this. And, and so ultimately, if they think they're going to move an application workload into the cloud and basically retrofit it with some sort of a security wrapping kind of a system with a user ID and log on, that, that, that application is going to get hacked. So you need to understand that you need encryption. You need to understand you need multi-factor multi, multi uh, factor authentication. You need to understand the identity management. And all these things really need to be built into the applications. And finally, considering governance, the ability to kind of put limitations around policies, kind of lightweight restrictions in terms of how we're going to leverage services and resources and moving into the cloud. And I think that's been something that's that's been neglected by a lot of the corporations that I've been working with lately. And I think Australia is not a not not immune to that. So, you know, let's consider security workloads, profiles, you know, look at your portfolio, things like that. Just kind of make some intelligent, commonsensical planning in terms of how you're going to move these things out of the cloud. Yeah, absolutely. Great tips there, Dave. In fact, we did a great show with Joe Kinsella, who's the uh, CTO and founder of uh, Cloud Health Technologies, uh, and we covered some great, uh, great insight into governance. So, you know, if you're watching the show now and you want to skip back into more information about governance, uh, as I said, it's a few months back, and uh, yeah, check that out because uh, we covered some great topics within cloud governance. That was uh, really good. So, Dave, look, thanks for being part of the Australia show again this week. Again, it's uh, we've covered some great ground. Thank you very much. My pleasure, man. Excellent, and thanks for watching everyone. We really do hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, onto the channel and all the social media that we're on. Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching, and until next week.